Hi, nice to see you again. In my last video, we talked about how to get a perfect photo, a photo that people look for more than one a second. And I told you that a good photo has two aspects, the technical aspects and of course the creative aspects. Now, in this video, we will talk about the creative aspects and how to get a good photo. And the creative aspects has mainly four points. The first one is the composition of the photo, the editing of the photo, of course, the moment when we take the photo and the color of the photo. The composition has a lot of rules. The three main classical and basic rules, I have made a video a few months ago, I leave you the link here, but in this case, in this video, we will talk about three other composition techniques that are very important. And these are the use of negative space, the use of the depth, and the use of symmetry and patterns in photography. So let's start with the negative space. The negative space is all the area that surrounds the main object in the photo. The negative space, also known as the white space, is all this part of the image that keeps clear and not includes the main object of the frame. It can sound strange to leave all this space free in the image, but it plays a major role, a crucial role, just to emphasize the main subject in the image. It already can help you to add some loneliness, some calm in any kind of photography you are doing. Using negative space, it not necessarily refers to use a big, huge amount of space inside the frame with a little small object inside. You can also use a small part of any kind of surface or texture or whatever you want and just choose a little part of this to show the negative space. Negative space is not something that you are looking for. So where can I find an empty or negative space? No. Negative space is something in composition that you use to add value to your image, to just emphasize the main object you want to try to give more importance in your image. And it can be so simple as, for example, this tree. I want to take a photo of this tree trying to show the location and trying to pay, give more uh, importance to this tree. So I will use all this space around of this tree to give some mood and to emphasize this tree. You need to think in how this space interacts with the object you want to keep more important inside of the image. In this case, for example, you can consider a boat in the middle of the ocean. You can consider a bird flying in the clothes, whatever. But you always have to think in how interacts this space with the object I'm taking the photo. <clears throat> the next technique of composition is to look for symmetry and patterns. You always need to find patterns that are repetitive in different aspects. You need to look for symmetrical shapes or elements that balance each other in the scene. Symmetry and patterns can create a sense of harmony and order in the image. Symmetry and patterns are really powerful elements that can add really value to your photograph. The symmetry and patterns can add a visual interest and structure to your image. But the question is, how can we find these patterns and symmetric shapes everywhere? Well, here are a few hints on how to do it. The first way we can find it is to look in the nature. Look around your environment, such as reflections in water, symmetrical architecture, tree leaves, or any object with a balanced shape. Placing these elements at the center of the frame can highlight the symmetry and create a harmonious image. 
The next way is to look for repetitive patterns. How, where we find repetitive patterns? Maybe in architecture. If you make a walk in the city or in, in, in the town where you're living, you can find all these symmetrical lines, all these symmetrical windows, all these symmetrical poles of lights. There are a lot of symmetrical situations in the daily environment in your city. Something very interesting is to sometimes break the symmetry. Sometimes breaking symmetry can be as effective as highlighting it. Experiment, for example, with breaking repetitive patterns to create a visual interest. For example, you can introduce an asymmetrical element into a predominant symmetrical composition to add some kind of tension to your image. Using patterns for example, in the foreground of your image. Using these patterns in the foreground can be some kind of introduction to your image, some kind of base of what you are trying to show in the, in the background of your image. For example, photographing the repetitive texture of a brick wall can add some depth and visual interest to your image. By introducing symmetry and patterns in your photos, you can add an additional value of visual interest and create stronger, more dynamic composition. Of course, experiment with different subjects and situations to find new, unique ways to use these elements in your image. And so, let's go to the third point of composition in the creative aspects of a good photo. In this time we will talk about the depth. What is the depth? Of course, after having seen what is the negative space, the symmetry and patterns, now we need to, to try to get a three-dimensional photo. And how can we get a three-dimensional photo if a photo is just a bidentional print? The way we can achieve this is searching for a foreground, a background and a middle ground. That means something in the front, in the middle and in the back of the photo. In my way, how I do this? The first thing is to look for something I really want to take the photo and that will be my background. Once I found this thing in the background, I walk around and try to find something that could be a good middle and a good foreground. In this case, for example, I think this can be a good option. I don't know, but let's see. This little castle behind me. We can use this castle as a background and I walk around the castle trying to find something good to use as a middle ground and a foreground. But there was really nothing interesting until I reached this little lagoon. I think this lagoon could be a good foreground for this castle. And what will I use as a middle ground? Maybe the reflection of the castle in the lagoon. So let's try if it works. Well, in this case, it doesn't work so good because the reflection of the castle in the water is not the best to all these plants over the water. But I hope you understand the idea of what I'm trying to tell you. The objective is to get this three-dimensional photo and trying to use maybe the things in the foreground and in the middle like a guiding line to the final object in the background. Of course, if your camera has the option to focus stack, it will be a lot more easier. Other way, you need to use a wide, a wide lens, a close aperture, trying to reach the hyperfocal distance and so get the picture sharp from front to back. But this is one of the best options to try to show a three-dimensional focus, a three-dimensional photo. Well, this tractor in the background or in the middle ground, it's not a good element in the photo. But 
They are working almost for one hour there. Well, now it still remains the moment and the colors in the creative aspects to get a good photo. But I think I, we will review this in the next video. So, I hope you like this video. If so, maybe you consider to subscribe and give it a like. And I hope to see you in the next video so you can learn how to take the best photo. Bye bye. I'll be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays. Way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never.